Okay, you roll right into it with me. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so have you ever heard them talk about Asriel and Cassian having point having pointed ears? No. The only <gasps> one is Reese. Hey, get in here. Hey, you. No, get in our room. Yeah, you, come here. Come on, come on, come in. Come on, get in our room. Welcome to another episode of Get in Our Room. She's Kristen. And that's Bobby. And this week we are back with more one-star reviews of Sarah J. Massworks and some more fan theories. Which makes this an emotional roller coaster from start to finish if you're a masochist. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I'm hoping it catches on. I don't think it will, but it'd be cool if it did. I think it's hilarious because it's kind of like kind of accurate. <laughs> it's extra hilarious because after our show last week, my dad texted me and he was like, masochist, hilarious. Um, and then I had to go look up what a masochist was because I knew it was a word, but I didn't know what it meant. <laughs> I had to look it up too because I was like, I know, like, I know. <laughs> Like, what is, like, in context, like, I can understand what it is, but, like, what is the true definition of it? And I was like, oh, weirdly accurate. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I can't believe she hasn't uh, labeled her fans that yet. So it's a person it's who drives. Bad marketing. Yeah. It's a person who drives sexual <laughs> gratification for, or, gratis, gratification <laughs> from their own pain or humiliation. Uh, I can't read this week. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty accurate for SJM fans. Yeah. Because there's some point, at some point, you have to admit to the humiliation that you like Tamlin. And he's a big topic of the one-star reviews today. At least the ones I picked out. Yeah. He's always a topic of conversation. Yep. I've got some, <laughs> I've got a lot of funny one-liners or like short <laughs> ones that I was like, these are, these are funny. These are good. But first, I want to hear what you've read this week, because some of what you've read has to do with some of the theory topics that I'm going to bring up pretty soon. Perfect. I've read Murder at the Mayfair. Oof. Which is, is CJ Archer, one? which has nothing. Is that, the, is that the first one of the Cleo Fox? I think so. Oh, it's so good. <sighs> it is. It's really funny. Um... Like, C.J. Arthur had, like, a lot of, like, heavy, like, she deals with murder. And I'm just like, ah, these are such a fun read. And then I'm like, wait, they're murder. <laughs> that one was a little bit more complex than the Steel and Glass ones. Or maybe I wasn't paying attention. No, I and turns in that. feel like the stories are, like, the individual, like... For Glass and Steel, that whole series has an com underlying complex mystery happening. But the, the mm -hmm. mysteries happening in each individual book are light and somewhat easy to digest, where these ones and Cleo Cleopatra Fox are a little bit more involved. Yeah. And then I tried to read this one book, but I got hung up on the title, and I had like a good five-minute meltdown about how you spell assassin. Um, but it's the Assassin's Blade. Uh, what is it? That's the little novella that goes with the Throne of Glass? Yeah, it's this series of five novellas. But have you ever stopped and looked at how fucking stupid the spelling of Assassin is? Ass, ass, in. Ass, ass, in. Like, ass, ass, are ins. there enough S's? <laughs> ass, ass, ins. Ass, ass, ins. Are there enough fucking S's in this word? Nope. I think we should add a couple more. What's that saying again where it's like, Assassin... You know what that you know what they say that makes you an ass and them an ass at the end. Is that the saying? Basically, there's two asses in there. I think it could go. <laughs> <laughs> like assumption, ass makes an ass out of you and me. Makes yep. you an ass and them an ass. I don't know. Comedy is just a numbers game. <laughs> Aside from the title that I'm really hung up on. Well, not the title, just that one word. It's pretty good. It's a yeah. I'm like dying to get back to the other I'm like dying to get back to the other books. The other part of the story, yeah. It's like you kind of know how it ends. You pretty much know how it ends. Like you pretty much know where it's going. Mm-hmm. Yep. There's a lot of details, but um 
if you know anything about me, you know I'm not really a detail person. <laughs> Which means like you're the worst person to try and read all of the SGM world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What did you read this week? I noticed that uh, little stack of books behind you. Looks like it's getting taller. I think so. I think it's actually getting. Or is your suitcase getting smaller? I'll tell Jacob whatever you want me to tell him. I'll tell him the suitcase is shrinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I actually think it's shrinking because I've read books off of that. But then the pile next to it, like right next to it, it there's two books there. <laughs> with some stuff that fell over on top of them. You can't see them. But there should be like three books sitting there, but I gave them to my sister to read. Mm. So Sharing is caring. It is, yeah. So I read... I have not completed any anything this week. I have, I'm listening to Daughter of No Worlds. And mm. I'm listening to that on Hoopla. It is... I'm about... I think I'm like 70% of the way through. It's really good. I'm, I'm liking it. It's pretty slow, really drug out, but it's the first book in a series uh, or a trilogy. So I what's get it. it. A, what's it about? <clears throat> so it's about... Spoilers only. <laughs> it's about <laughs> this young woman who she's born fragmented. So she's got like light skin and dark skin and she's like so she's part albino and part like normal and albinos are normal people but go on <laughs> that, no, that, that, yes albino <laughs> Albinos are real people. That's a normal. I don't know what I'm trying to go for, a guy. Go for here, guys. I'm so actually, sorry. I guess, actually, I guess it's not normal because it's literally a mutation. Anyways, we're super off track. Keep going. <laughs> I blame you. So <laughs> she's part albino. Um, and in this world, the there's a group of people, and they have a name. And I cannot, because I haven't seen it written, I can't say it. So, starts with a V. Wait, what? <laughs> I haven't seen it written, so I don't remember how to say it. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you've heard it. Several times. Like, I'm 70% <laughs> of the way through the Uh, a girl after my own heart. Very visual. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yep. So. <laughs> this is why I read, like, physical books and listen to them. Like, I do both. Anyways, she has powers. She's, she's actually a slave. She gets freed. She goes to the place where all the other magical people are. There's two sides they're the sun people and the moon people basically the moon people are the more albino featured you know all white everything even eyes whatever and then there's the others who have darker skin darker hair all of this stuff and she's really driven to try and get back to the land that she came from to free the other slaves and she finally gets over there. There's a lot more to it. That's all I'm going into <laughs> it right now because I don't want to do spoilers. Um, it's very good. It's very popular series, and it was super super popular a couple of months ago. I'm just now getting around to it though. And then I am also reading the arc of. Oops, I hit my mic. My bad, guys. Sorry, fam. <laughs> the Bones of Benevolence. And I am 40% of the way through, and I'm fucking terrified. The Bones of what? Belevolence. It's by Lauren M. Leisure. She wrote The Sin of Saints, the book I'm obsessed with. This is book two. This is the arc. It's coming out soon. And yeah, it's I'm scared for what's happening. I think I've got some things figured also, out. Quick, 
Sorry, go ahead. I think I've got some things figured out and I know people die and I'm really terrified. Like I can't, <laughs> I'm going to like, before I can read this night, I will have to remove my makeup because I'm pretty sure I'm going to get all emotional. Just let the tears remove your makeup. That's what I do. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was going to give a quick shout out to Lauren. She is always hyping us up on Instagram, man. She is yeah. so interactive with everything we post. Shout out to Lauren for in as Instagram besties. Yeah. She's amazing. I see you. I see you girl. Yeah. So She's awesome. Yeah, man. Did you read anything else this week? No, you're on the arc. No, I've just been focusing on that. And I've been reading it slow because I'm like, yeah. keep rereading reading... things and taking notes and stuff. <clears throat> it's funny for how much we read. I can't read anything technical. So I was like trying to read that manual at work. And I was like, <laughs> I fell asleep. <laughs> 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 oh, no, reading doesn't put me to sleep. I could stay up all night. Oops, I fell asleep at noon. <laughs> Any hoodle. All right. I bet you're just bursting at the seam for some fan theories. I am. But I had to redact <laughs> one of them because I realized that the depth of my fan theory, theory whoa, words are hard today. Would you look at that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, fam. Okay, so but do me a favor. Don't g edit out any of the giggling. I'm going to try not to, but it seems like Even we're pretty- long periods where it's just <laughs> laughing. That's what I'm worried about. Because <laughs> it's also, we normally record in the morning, but we pushed it back today. So it's five o'clock on a Sunday for me and four for Kristen. Oh, it is four. Yeah. It's a whole, well, Maybe it took me like an hour to get- yeah, probably. All right. So <laughs> I had to redact one of my my things I wanted to talk about because I realized that you have to finish Throne of Glass before I can talk about that one. And it the has whole series. Uh yeah, sorry. The whole the whole ass damn thing. What if I never finished it? What if I just stopped right now? I don't think you would let yourself, first of all. <laughs> She prays. <laughs> Second of all, you would just have to agree to hear things and believe, take my word for everything that I tell you. I already do. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> also, you're right. I couldn't stop now even if I wanted to. I am so obsessed with Selena Sardanthian, uh, Aelin Galanathian. <laughs> See, I've Robert only Galeon seen it written, thing. and that's why I can't pronounce it. <laughs> yeah. I need both. I need a balance to correct myself <laughs> and then to remember how to say it. Yep. I want to. And now, quick question. Yeah. Me, to clarify for the listeners at home are these theories for Akatar the series or just the second book? Just to clarify how wide reaching these might be. This is going to be for all of Akatar, and I'm going to say all of Throne of Glass, but I really throttle back the details for the Throne of Glass stuff. You just finished Air of Fire, correct? Um, Queen of Shadows? Queen of Shadows, yes. Is what I just finished. So then I switched to Assassin's Blade, and then I'm hitting back at it with... Empire of Storms is after Assassin's Blade. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like halfway through Assassin's Blade and then I'll pick up with Empire of Storms. So you just finished Queen of Shadows, Empire of Storms, okay, and then Tower Dawn. You just finished King Queen of Shadows. You are introduced to the witches already, correct? Yeah. Yep. So... You... Just just a little bit, though. They've just been sitting up in the mountain on their... Wervens? Yeah. Wyverns? Wyverns? Fucking dragons. Dragons are dragons. <laughs> so, <clears throat> you've been to... Also, how do you say W-Y-R-D? Word. Okay, good. That's how I've been saying it. Yeah, word. Word marks. Word, word gate. Word shit. Yeah. Yep. Word help them. <laughs> yeah. I want to 
wanted to call it weird just because you know gotta weird marks stay weird w weird marks word marks yeah they're word i want to talk about the illyrians and witches okay and how the illyrians were bred and put in Perinthian. And that's stated by e SJM? I will get there. Yes, it is. Uh -oh. Yep. Because, uh, uh, a quick aside, the Illyrians are the only ones of the Fae that have wings? Or they're just... Correct, because they're a, not... A breed apart. They're... Uh, so... Okay, you roll right into it with me. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Have you ever heard them talk about Asriel and Cassian having, point, having pointed ears? No. The only <gasps> one is Reese, because his dad is a High Lord Fae, but his mom was Illyrian. He has pointed ears. But I don't so ever... So Illyrians don't have pointed ears. Right. Can I Google this, or are we just spitballing? You could totally Google this and check me, but I'm all, I'm pretty sure, like, I don't remember them ever Google's creepy. <laughs> as soon as I type in do I-L-L, -L, it says do Illyrians have pointed ears. Stop listening to me. <laughs> so fucked. <laughs> so <laughs> okay, so according to Google, you are correct. Reese is the sole exception for pointed ears. So, hear me out. Keep listening, team. All right, so, <laughs> so Illyrians are witch velg experiments because you're you, they're at the at the keep in the mountains, and they're learning to uh, ride the waverins. I think is how you say it, waverins. I have no idea. And you can also, they also start talking about how the witches are being experimented on, right? Yep. Yep. So the witches and the Velg mating has given us Illyrians. Witches originally, if you, if you pay attention to the story about how the witches came to be, witches were originally, their origin is from a Velg and Fae mating. That's how we got witches. Right. So now we got the Illyrians that are witch and Valg. So the Illyrians would be like three fourths Valg? Basically. No. Interesting. Yes. Yes. So. Oh. I know I had to think math, about it. baby. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> so there's, there's rumors and people speculate that there's two reasons, could be two reasons that the Illyrians are placed in to guard uh, Romuel, the mountain. Okay. Romuel, 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 the mountain. And it's either because One of those is correct, but I'm not going to tell you which one. <laughs> and nor am I, because I fuck if I remember. I gotta, just keep- I don't know either. Just, just trying to keep some of this shit straight. I'm like, I don't care about the pronunciation. I know what I'm talking about. That's all that matters. And if you can pick up what I'm laying down, we're good. So, <laughs> I don't have time for this. Just listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> so, they're either guarding dragons or- a, a word gate slash Felg prince. Yeah. So continuing on with this, because this just keeps kind of rolling and morphing as does most things in the Mossiverse. Cause we Wait, are can I just ask a super side question really quick? Because I'm really confused. She does this with all of her characters. Yep. Well, not all of them. Why are the mountain people, right? The Illyrians, the White Fang Mountain people, why are they so tan? Why are they so tan? Why have, are they always the tannest of all the fae? They have wings. That makes no sense. They fly close to the sun. But it's like cold. Wouldn't they be wearing like jackets? I don't think it's because they're tan. I just think it's because they're darker skinned people. I know, but if you look at the world and how it's like closer to the equator, farther out of the mountains, tanner, farther north, closer to the mountains, whiter. Why, why'd she flip that on us? Creative liberties. Uh, I don't know why it drives me the most nuts out of everything else, but it drives me up a wall. I don't know why. I don't know why. 
<laughs> Maybe Sorry. we'll find out one day. Maybe we'll find out one day. I don't know. Okay. SJM, this masochist needs answers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this one too. <laughs> Please send some answers my way. That'd be lovely because I fucking go. I go like on these lines of thought. Okay. Next thing. Are you ready? Siphons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tell me what you know about witch mirrors. They keep talking about the witch towers and the witch mirrors. Are you talking to me? I'm t yeah, bitch. Who else is here? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I wish we had another room here to. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know anything about witch mirrors. Okay. Are witch mirrors the same as siphons? Yeah. So listen. In Throne of Glass, they ta start talking about Baba Yellow Legs or whatever, right? How yeah. she has all these mirrors in her hut, her caravan. Yeah. And then they started talking mm -hmm. about these witch towers that are, like, looming in the background, right? The This whole concept. Well, mm -hmm. the whole point of mirrors for witches is to channel power and and, and give direction to power. What the fuck are siphons? Because they, they literally talk about how witches had power, but they could only focus it with mirrors. And it was so explosive that the power could only be used, if they wanted to use all their power, they could only use it one time. It was like the ultimate sacrifice because it like makes them explode. They literally talk about the same thing for Illyrians who are said to have similar explosive power and it's dangerous if they don't use the siphons to channel it literally uh, the same exact thing i don't think i understood siphons before this conversation <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> so cassian even talks about in akasift how illyrians came from somewhere else like they weren't there like or around Reese also goes on to talk about how Nesta is a true Illyrian, and they even reference Nesta as a witch a lot. Side characters reference her as a witch. Everyone starts talking, speaking these things about the witch. And then going back to our conversation last week, um, how the bone carver was talking to Cassian about the wind, like I can smell the wind on you or whatever. Witches like are called to the wind they always are talking about like manon is always talking about the wind she's always talking about how she can feel and smell and the wind all the time also want to point this out because i think this is fucking interesting because this one came to me today when i was like taking notes looking up some things to know where you were at and so i didn't give spoilers and that's how i knew i had to cut out my other theory i can't talk about it yet we know very, very little about Reese's, Azriel, and Cassian's lineage. We have three super powerful Bat Boys. We also have three super powerful Iron Witch lines in the Throne of Glass. We have the Yellow Legs, the Black be Beaks, and the Blue Bloods. Those are all just the Iron Teeth Clan. Three. Three all right, Bat so who Boys. Do you think came from How, who do you think came from who? I think. I mean, be... obviously, Reese is a black beak. Yeah, I think it would be hilarious. Ooh, Asriel's got to be the blue, blue blood. No, why do you think that? Because he just seems softer. No, more I think he's more then... malevolent. I think he's more malevolent, and I bet you he's got some saffron ankles. He's got saffron ankles. Yeah, that's so <laughs> gross. That seems worse than cankles. <laughs> Azrael with the saffron ankles. So you think he's a yellow, yellow legs? Yeah, because he's really malevolent and like just gives me like those like vibes. Mm -hmm. And then you can't take you that leaves Cassian is is it blue bloods? Blue is bloods, that? yeah. And they don't they're like you don't really take them seriously, and nobody takes Cassian seriously. That's true. <laughs> Interesting. And also, okay, so the Iron Teeth 
group of witches have more Volg traits, while the Crochin witches have more Fey. And Crochins actually have magic, like more magical abilities. And they're like typically like kinder witches. So I like if Ness is being thrown into this witches thing, I'm wondering if she's more of a Crochin. Or maybe she's the black beak. I don't know. I thought they just kept calling her that because it was like bitch with a W. And so that way they didn't get hit if they called her a witch instead of a bitch. No, I think it's purposeful that she that she uses the word witch. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought because it rhymes with bitch. <laughs> I think it might be foreshadowing, but maybe you're right. Maybe I'm wrong. No, your theory makes more sense. <laughs> also, the more you talk about wind, all I can hear is Theo Vaughn being like, do you think the wind is trying to tell us something that we don't know how to hear anymore? <laughs> Joe just goes, no. <laughs> and I was like, you know, Theo, you might be on to something. I think Joe's wrong this time. <laughs> oh, i love theo von theo be on our podcast oh my gosh i can't even imagine but yeah so i think illyrians are definitely witch and valg mix and i think they were brought in to protect and hide something i also think that our three bat boys have some type of lineage or connection to the other witch clans I don't, I don't know how, but, I, and if, and if they don't, then I think somehow Nesta's going to get tied in with the witches. I'm just, I'm not, so I'm not sure, but it's like, I really need some answers. Okay. Follow up on the witches. So witches are always born female, right? No Correct. matter what, but they always mate with men, just human men. I think, right? yeah, human or fey. So wouldn't that mean that they're getting more human with each passing line, each passing generation? Yeah. I think they talk about that, too, in Throat of Glass. But they don't... It doesn't have... They, like, can't... Because of the, the three-faced goddess or whatever, they can't... It's really hard for them to conceive. So I think at the same time, because it... It's always, I think there's a balance somehow. Mm. I'm not sure though. Magic. Yeah. Weird how that works. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had one more question. And oh yeah, where do the wings come from? The witches obviously don't have wings. Yeah. The, is that the, the <clears throat> Valg? Is that what it is? Yeah. You will meet some creations in the next yeah. couple books that are winged and i think it explains a lot gotcha so in theory the overall arching theory is that all three of these series including crescent city are the same rules the same universe the same it's not even necessarily the same universe it's it's string theory, so it's like universes on top of each other that are accessible to each other through certain tears or portals, which are word gates. Ah, okay, okay. And then they start to talk a lot about the language of the universe, and especially in Throne of Glass, word marks. I think the Illyrian tattoos are word marks. Oh. And then that Rowan, his his tattoos are in the in the ancient Fey language. And so I can't say that either. Sorry. There's, <laughs> I had to stop myself. There's another instance where I where the ancient Fey language comes into play and it, you'll see it it referenced and kind of come back in in Crescent City. Here's my fan theory. I think, don't take this wrong, 
I think SJM really blew her load on Selena Sardanthian for female characters. Yeah. So I don't like, I don't like Feyre. <laughs> yeah, Feyre is not my favorite. After I read about Selena and Aelin, I was like... Because I, I read Akatar first and then Throne of Glass, and I was like... Oh, this is much better. Like, I read all of Throne of Glass in the month of August last year. At all eight, even including the novellas, I read them all in one month. It was probably the fucking third. Yeah, it was like <laughs> 4,500 <laughs> pages. It, that is fucking nerd level. Like, and I'm totally fucking proud of that, too. God damn it. <laughs> You have something to say about it? You can just not. Thanks. Um, oh, I already said it. Yeah, you're. I'm talking to other people. You're. <laughs> you can get away with oh, a no, lot I'll of fight. shit. <laughs> I'll fight somebody else for you, but <laughs> yeah, she's like, I can say it, but we'll we'll both deck another person for calling you a nerd. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> nerds are in. Okay. Nerds are in. So, yes, yeah, there's, I forgot what we were talking about. Because <laughs> my head All just right. keeps going. Oh, about how much we don't like Feyre, but we did like Selena. Oh, yeah, Aelin. fuck yeah. Oh, Aelin is superior. Man, I was reading Assassin's Blade and her little friend Ansel. Ansel? Ansel. Ansel? And they, like, plinked glasses, and they're like, to being the most ferocious women the world over, or whatever the exact quote was. And I was going to send it to you, and then you get to the next page, and you're like, well, fuck. <laughs> okay, just go ahead and unhighlight that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit goes down, man. Shit goes down. Yeah. We're going to move on from fan theories, because I'm going to end up spilling on things that... I shouldn't be spilling on yet because one, I really don't want to ruin it for you. And two, I want to try and stay on task with the thoughts and the progress that you're making. So. Gotcha. So one star reviews. One star reviews, baby, of a court, uh, a court of mist and fury, right? Yeah. Did you know that on Amazon, there are no one star reviews listed? Nuh-uh. Really? Really. I went and I was looking, because I saw you put some stuff in here about Goodreads. I was like, oh, I wonder what's on Amazon. And I looked, and there's 108,000, just over 108,000 reviews. It has 4.8 stars out of 5, and there are no one-star reviews listed. The lowest it goes to is three-star reviews. And there are a total of 2,180 rated at three stars and only 145 reviews at three stars on Amazon. Wow. Fascinating. Uh, while doing research for this episode, do you know what else I found out? What? A Court of Mist and Fury is a banned book in most public schools. Oh, really? <clears throat> Chapter 55. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> ah, shucker. <laughs> Which is hysterical because that means there's probably a bunch of parents that had to read it to find that out. All right. You want to go first? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So I, after that, I jumped over to Goodreads too, and then I just filtered out and I tried to make sure I wasn't doing the same reviews that you chose. <laughs> um, <laughs> there was a couple people that brought up something similar, like a similar theme. And so I kind of like zeroed in on this, this theme and it talks about how they really wish that Akamath, what it was not from Ferris point of view. Cause people, there's a consensus around not everyone loving Feyre. <laughs> like, even people who love the books like I do, 
And, like, I am not the biggest Feyre fan. I love a lot of the adjacent characters, and I love the storyline. So this person was going on to say about how um, they were really hoping that this second book would be about, from Reese's point of view, and giving him an opportunity to redeem himself, because you really start to like Reese and at the end of A, a Court of Thorns and Roses. And so you want to hear his story about how he, like, again, there's spoilers all over this, you guys, all over this. So <laughs> <laughs> talking about how it would be really cool to ha hear his story about how he really pushed back and fought against Amarantha, like the little things that he did to do that. And this person was saying how they, I was actually hoping that Reese would hook up with Feyre's sister, sister Nesta, because let's face it, they both had some re redeeming to do by the end of Ak Akotar. Um, and she says, why couldn't we have had Feyre and Tamlin as side characters and move the story to somebody else's point of view? There's no doubt that Rhysand would uh, make a brilliant lead. I don't... And then she goes on to say, this this reviewer goes on to talk about how I don't think she, as in Sarah J. Mass, is capable of writing a heroine who sticks with one guy. Because in Throne of Glass... <laughs> Right. Yeah, it's like she's trying to it's like she's trying to like throw you off the scent, like woo. <laughs> yeah, because when again, spoilers for throwing a glass right now, too, guys. Selena and Sam. Selena and and Kale. Selena slash Aelin Rowan. Like, um Yeah. We get we go. Oh, and there's that quick well, she dabbles with Dorian for a quick minute, right? Oh, yeah, and she dabbles with Dorian. That's so cute, dabbling with Dorian. <laughs> I need a hat that says that. <laughs> I, I'd i read that novella. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Uh, Dorian. I am team Dorian 110%. Uh, Are you really? Yes. Are you team Kale? All right. Yeah. Well, mostly <sighs> Rowan. But Dorian oh, yeah. seems like such a... Dorian's... Um, I don't know. I haven't. I don't think I've gotten far enough in to like really get to know him because he seems like a shell of a character. He doesn't seem very deep yet. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it changes. Yeah. So I'll let you figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm gonna say is because again, Feyre, there's like the guy, the human guy that she hooks up with occasionally in a barn, and then there's Tamlin, <laughs> and then there's Resand, and there's some implement in. There's always implications about Asriel and Cassie, and even when we get on to Nessa's story, there's, like, <laughs> Asriel gets involved. Anyways, the 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 thing that never <laughs> happened that Kristen wished happened, the, the chapter that didn't exist that Kristen wanted with Asriel and Cassie and Nessa. <laughs> but, yeah. but, um, I will be so fucking mad so fucking mad if she fucks with what's going on in Crescent City. That's all I'm saying because you haven't read Crescent City yet, but if she <laughs> fucking makes Bryce go through men, I will literally lose my- Burn this tinderbox to the ground. I will fucking lose my goddamn mind. <laughs> I will lose my fucking mind. <sighs> okay, now that that's out there, I'll keep going. Okay, so- this next one was hilarious. It's two lines. And I mostly went for funny shit because I was just like, they're not wrong. <laughs> they're not wrong. <laughs> he is 500 plus. Her prefrontal cortex has not fully developed. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yep. Uh, yeah. Yep, that's, that's the whole review. That's the whole review. <laughs> <laughs> uh you know honestly i'd read that book <laughs> <laughs> you did <laughs> uh yeah that's 
you know, the age gap, and I think this is in one of mine where they're like, the age gap is creepy if you make it a couple of decades, but once you make it a couple of centuries, sexy. <laughs> See, here's my thing with that. Adults consenting, I don't fucking care about the age. Consenting adults, I do not <laughs> care about the age. I. It's just not... It's just not a thing. Like, consenting adults, that's all I need. But one thing I do hate, is especially since all of these books are mm, made up, is how they... Fair is what? 19? Yeah, she is a little young. Like, 19. 19 does seem a little young. But she's so, like... So, I get it. In the eyes of American law, generally, in most states, an adult. Yep. But, like... Why couldn't why couldn't she be an adult at like twenty five or thirty? Like if he's five hundred, yeah. What if we gave her ten more years? But they do this in all like so many romance novels, so many fantasy novels, right? If mm -hmm. you go back to Twilight, and she's sixteen, she's sixteen, seventeen. She's in high school, so yeah, seventeen. Like why why can't we make our main characters mid twenties? Mid twenties, man. Why do they all? Why do all female main characters have to be eighteen? I don't yeah. get it. This next one's really good too. <clears throat> My own pet peeve. No, I think it's. I think it's. I like it. It's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> this book is actual cringy porn. If you're into it, you'll have a fun time. However, I've reached my breaking point hearing about fairy cox. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, she's not wrong. They're not wrong. Like, they're not wrong. <laughs> Hardly ever are they. <laughs> I'm just like, that's a thing. That That is it. <laughs> oh, my God. <clears throat> this next one's pretty good, too. Moss would, <laughs> Moss would rather die than use the word men and women. <laughs> It's like male, female, like all this stuff. <laughs> okay, but, right, if men and women is human, males and females, right? Like, you don't call your dogs men and women. Horses aren't, like, men and women are humans. So, to get across the point that they're not humans, she did have to come up with a different word. Thank yep. God she doesn't call them studs and bitches. <laughs> It could always be worse. <laughs> it could always be worse. <laughs> Can you imagine? If... All right, now it'd be cool if she called them studs and bitches. This reviewer has a lot of questions. They go like this. Why? Why does she glow? Why does Sarah J. Mass love giving her characters the most brutal trauma for literally no reason? Why does everyone have the weirdest names and why are they all spelled like that? How? How does any of that make sense? How is there so much world building yet so little? <laughs> and um, I like highlighted this section. I go, Massaverse bullshit. It's tough to get through. <laughs> One thing I don't agree with is the same lady who had all these questions. She goes, how is Stephanie Meyer a better writer? And I was like, I disagree with that. I disagree with that. Okay. I just want to remind everybody that in one of the Twilight books, I don't remember which one, when, what is her fucking name? Bella? When Bella fell into a depression, Stephanie Meyer just wrote the name of the month on, like, six pages. It was just six blank pages. Instead of just saying, like, six months forward, she just wrote the month, and that was, that was it. That's how she... It's not writing. Well, it's spelling. I guess <laughs> technically it's writing. <laughs> that same woman finishes her review with, Reese makes Edward Cullen look like a great dude. And I was like, ew. No. No. I don't think I remember enough about Edward Cullen. We should... <laughs> we should get What's-His-Face to play Reese. Uh, what's his name? Robert Patters. Pat Patters. Patson. Robert Patson. I don't remember how to say his name. Robert Patterson. Patter. Wait. 
Pattinson. Did you know that he was Cedric Diggory too? Uh huh. I did not know that until last week. <laughs> I was like watching Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire over at Paige's house, and I was like, "Man, why is Cedric so handsome?" And he got killed off, and like you never see him play in anything else. She looks at me, she goes, "He plays Edward Cullen in Twilight." And I was like, he does? I was like, why does he look like shit in Twilight? <laughs> and he was Batman, wasn't he? No, he was... Uh... Yeah, he was Batman. He was Batman? He was Batman in 2022. I don't think it did well, but he was Batman. He was Batman. I haven't watched it. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Okay. I'm still team Jensen Ackles for Batman. If they're going to do it again, Jensen Ackles. They are doing another Batman. Or what did I just see that they were doing something else of? Don't know. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Tell me about your one star reviews, Kristen. <laughs> okay. Mine aren't as funny, so I'll have to be the, the humor for you. Where do I want to start off? So the first one is I knew going in. That it was going to be a massive act of revisionism with regard to Rizand, the villain of the first book. And as someone who loves villains and the Persephone myth, that could have been something I could have gotten behind under the right circumstances. Now, I know you're a big Greek mythology fan, right? I do okay. I didn't know about Persephone. I've dabbled in Greek mythology. I wouldn't say that I know it. I know of it. You don't know um, So then I... I didn't know this one. No, okay, go ahead. I know prior this. Yeah. To, prior to this rabbit hole that I was sent down. So, for people that don't know, right, Sarah J. Mass includes a lot of Greek, or mythology in general, right? She's got some Irish mythology, <clears throat> Greek mythology. Yeah, she blends um, a few things for different plot lines. Uh, and so the Persephone, so it's possible that this could have worked its way into the story. But for those that don't know, uh, the story of Persephone, the sweet daughter of goddess Demeter? Yeah. Demeter? Uh, was kidnapped by Hades and later became queen of the underworld. And in a lot of the retellings, Persephone was seen as very naive, a naive little girl that just didn't know any better. And honestly, that fits with Feyre, right? That fits with everything that we know about her. So that is a very applicable comparison between these two stories um however i don't think this was going this had any intention of being a persephone retelling in any c capacity right so then this this lady goes on i guess it's a lady i didn't actually check the genders before i booted these into my notes <laughs> we're supposed to feel sorry for Rhysand because he was amarantha's whore and yes i do feel sorry for him Anth amarantha was awful but that doesn't excuse his own abuse. This is for your own good is literally one of the go-to phrases of abusers. He was awful in a court of Rones, thorns and roses. He never, and he never really grovels for it, right? At no point in the second book, Akamath, Akamath, does he ever have to like truly grovel and turn stuff around. Right? And I kind of agree with them on that, that he kind of shared his own stories and she just kind of accepted it, but he never actually had to make amends or work for his redemption. And I have to agree with him on that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, and then I tacked this one onto yours. <laughs> I think we could all agree it's plain wrong if a middle-aged man tries to get into a teenager's pants, but it's hotness if you stretch the age gap from decades to centuries. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I just hate that. I hate that so many books of whether it's romance novels or fantasy, their characters are always 18. Like, but I guess if their main target audience is like 12 year olds, then that seems old. So I could see how they're in a bit of a pickle there with picking the age of their main character. So this next one, 
I thought was kind of interesting because we always talk, everybody has renamed Tamlin to Tampon and we're not really big fans of him. But uh, this person said, I hate, I hated how Mass compared Tam and Reese in this book all the time. I never liked Tam, but seriously, how much shit, how much shit you can splash on one person before he turns into shit himself. I pity Tam and what Mass did to him. Time and time again, Mass shoves down your throats. How Reese excels, excels past Tam and everything. For example, Tam didn't want to talk to Feyre about his nightmares. Reese wanted to talk and share. She goes on to share a bunch of different examples uh, between Tam and Reese and how Reese is continuously so much better than Tamlin. To the point where it makes it so easy to hate Tamlin. It's so easy, right? And I feel like it would have been a much more interesting story if Ta if we were torn, if we were torn between Tamlin and Resand of like, God, who should she pick? I'm team Tamlin. I'm team Resand. Like to have that like back and forth, but it was so cut and dry. Yeah. And then she, like this commenter said, she just kept piling shit on Tamlin and you're like, yeah, she did kind of make it easy. To see Reese as the good guy. Yep. But maybe a little bit morally gray in there of who's good and who's bad between those two. Would have just made that a little bit more interesting. Because, like, when you... The more and you get into the story of the whole Akatar series, you start to learn more about Tamlin and Reese Sans relationship and how they aren't that fucking different at all. And that's why, like, yeah. I don't necessarily not like Tamlin... I just don't understand what role he's going to play moving forward because he like kind of yeah. comes back to be somewhat involved, but he's like weird. Like his, pre she, they make his presence seem very weird, but he's still a fucking high Lord and everything that he, he happened to him and happened around him is literally no different to what happened to Resand, except that Resand was able to save all of his friends, where Tamlin had to kill all of his friends. Yeah. In an effort to save yeah. every other fucking fae. Who's right. really the bad guy there? I don't know. Like yeah. you said, morally gray. And it's gray. I don't know how to share this. We might have to edit this out, depending on how the spoilers go. Spoilers go. Spoilers. Spent too long in the South. Um, <laughs> be wary of spoilers. Uh, <laughs> but didn't Reese and Tamlin meet all bloodied in a hallway committing the same crime? Yeah. Isn't that the story Reese tells? Like, they committed the same crime against each other? Against each other's families, yes. That's exactly what I was but getting at. But, oh, okay, yeah. But yep. Reese was Reese was in the clear. and But again, it loops back. They're right. Reese didn't have to grovel for any sort of redemption. And I hate agreeing with one-star reviews, but... I like them. I they open my eyes to... Well. Yeah, they open my eyes to being like, well, you're not fucking wrong. I don't necessarily wholly agree with yeah. you, but you're not wrong at all. I also don't know if it warrants a one-star rating, but they have interesting points. Yeah, for um, some people, they just feel but, strongly enough, then I guess that's chill. Yeah. But yeah. I'm just going to say it again, because I can't get over... You're right, Ree should have had to grab, grovel more. Or, yeah. like, have some sort of redemption arc, other than crying. <laughs> so then this last one, this last one is about Feyre. Why feel guilty about wanting another male? But no... Feyre is Mary Sue. She can't be the simple girl who had a change of heart. She loved, but had a serious reason to fall out of love. Easy peasy. I think that was a little out of context. Anyways, the next line, they were talking about her choosing different males. And then she was like, heck, I would have respected her more if she was an elite prostitute serving high lords and choosing her next lover without shame or labeling lust as love. I'm gonna need somebody to write that fan fiction. I am here for it. <laughs> I am here for the fan fiction that is her being an elite prostitute. Oh my god, a spy? An elite prostitute spy jumping from high lord to high lord? That is the most interesting thing Feyre could do. 
Yeah. I um <laughs> I read that too and I was like, damn. That sounds like something I'd read. I also just love how <laughs> I think it goes with the age thing, right? Like as a 19 year old, you're going to do that. But as a 25 year old, you're going to be like, I own this body. This, these are my choices. I'm moving <laughs> on to the next one. That was just a thing. That was just a fling. But now we're going to go on to the next thing. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, that's all the one star reviews I got. I mean, there's there's plenty more. Yeah, there's like um, 9,000 more if you want to go read them, guys. But and they're long. Clear your schedule. Oh, and each I don't I don't know if this is taken into a account with the one star ratings. I don't know if that's number of times somebody clicked one star or actually wrote a review. Uh, the other thing is each one of these one star reviews has like 200 comments attached to it. Wow. If you're look if you're looking if you're looking for drama, head to Goodreads. <laughs> they got they got some good drama. They've got the drama. You can reply to other people's comments. <laughs> they have the yeah. drama. Arby's has the meats, Goodreads has the drama. <laughs> and the meats. <laughs> and the meats. Oh man. I e So there's gonna be Reach my breaking point about hearing about fairy cocks. <laughs> <laughs> They've got the meats. Uh, and so Akatar is not a complete series, correct? There's going to no, be... it's not complete. There's supposed to at least be right. one more book, and it's supposed to be about Elaine. But I have no idea how she's going to wrap this shit up. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what the fuck SJM is doing. I'm not even going to act like I have <laughs> any clue, because Crescent City 3 comes out. In January, and how Crescent City 2 ends, I'm like, why don't we have more of the other? I'm so confused. My opinion doesn't matter, so it's fine. Um, if you have questions, ask the One Star Review people, because they could see that plot twist coming from a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i can too but i like to know i'm right so i finish the damn book okay okay cool glad we're on the same page team uh yeah thanks i just want to say thank you to everybody that leaves one star reviews this is quickly becoming my favorite pastime i love it too reading one star reviews. it's fun like i said i get so much joy out of these like they're funny they're not wrong some of them are wrong the whole stephanie myers <laughs> edward cullen thing a little, little it's your opinion you got it you can have it i mean sometimes, sometimes they out themselves as to why they think the way that they think and why they're so wrong yes like... and then again <laughs> you know that just makes me know that we have different tastes and i'll probably read it and like it which is good for me so thanks yeah we'll be back next week with more of this stuff <laughs> <laughs> who knows what we're doing next week we'll let you know next week in the beginning <laughs> of the episode until then check out our other shit um it's good make sure you keep your eyes out for um trilina poochie's not so lucky because that drops tomorrow right the third yeah tomorrow yes oh can i double up on your book yeah, announcement doubling it up Joe Brenner, uh, she's the author of the Bad Heroes book series. Uh, the first one is You Can Follow Me. And the next one is Lose Me in the Shadows. And that comes out on July 6th. Um, and if you read the first one, you know it ends on like the ultimate cliffhanger. So, And then also be on the lookout <laughs> for The Bones of Benevolence. That's coming out uh, July 11th, I believe. July 11th. So. The Bones of the bone, bones of what? The bones of benevolence. Benevolence? The bones Benevolent. of... The... It's, an, it's an N, not an L. Yeah, well, Midwest. So let me try that again. <laughs> <laughs> the Bones of Benevolence comes out July 11th. That's by Lauren Leisure. So be sure to watch out for that one, too. It's going to take me 40 minutes to edit this last whole thing of this book. <laughs> I was just looking up what a benevolence is. That's not a word. Stop. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'd say just leave this in here. I don't even know how many people get to the end.
this would be like a reward for getting all the way through it. Is this chaos? Yeah, so we'll see or you, you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs> All the way through if you made it. I'm grateful for you. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this week. See you next week. <laughs>